boys and girls, I'm here tonight to read to you chapters 11 and 12 of Charlotte's Web. So this chapter 11 is called The Miracle. The next day was foggy. Everything on the farm was dripping wet. The grass looked like a magic carpet. The asparagus patch looked like a silver forest. On foggy mornings, Charlotte's Web was truly a thing of beauty. This morning, each thin strand was decorated with dozens of tiny beads of water. The web glistened in the light and made a pattern of loveliness and mystery like a delicate veil. Even Lurvy, who wasn't particularly interested in beauty, noticed the web when he came with the pig's breakfast. How he noted how clearly it showed up, and he noted how big and carefully built it was. Then he took another look and he saw something that made him set his pail down. There. In the corner of the web, neatly woven in block letters, was a message that said, Some pig. Lurvy felt weak. He brushed his hand across his eyes, and he stared harder at Charlotte's web. Can you see what it says? Some pig. I hope you can see it. It's right there in the center. I'm seeing things, he whispered. He dropped to his knees and uttered a short prayer. Then, forgetting all about Wilbur's breakfast, he walked back to the house and he called Mr. Zuckerman. I think you better come down to the pig pen, he said. What's the trouble, asked Mr. Zuckerman. Anything wrong with the pig? Uh, not exactly, said Lurvy. Come see for yourself. So the two men walked silently down to Wilbur's yard and Lurvy pointed to the spider's web. Do you see what I see, he asked. Zuckerman stared at the writing on the web and then he went, some pig. Then he looked at Lurvy, and they both started to tremble. Charlotte was sleepy after her night's exertion. She smiled as she watched. Wilbur came and stood directly under the web. Some pig, muttered Lurvy in a low voice. Some pig, whispered Mr. Zuckerman. They stared and stared for a long time at Wilbur, and then they stared at Charlotte. You don't suppose that that spider, began Mr. Zuckerman, but he shook his head and he couldn't even finish his sentence. Instead, he walked solemnly back to the house and he spoke to his wife. Edith, he said, something has happened. He went to the living room and sat down and Mrs. Zuckerman followed. I have to tell you, Edith, he said, you better sit down. Mrs. Zuckerman sank into a chair. She looked pale and frightened. Edith, he said, I think you had best be told that we have a very unusual pig. A look of complete bewilderment came over Mrs. Zuckerman's face. Homer Zuckerman, what in the world are you talking about? She said. This is a very serious thing, Edith, he replied. Our pig is completely out of the ordinary. What's unusual about the pig, asked Mrs. Zuckerman. Well, I don't really know yet, said Mr. Zuckerman. But we have received a sign, Edith. A mysterious sign. A miracle has happened on this farm. There's a large spider's web in the doorway of the barn cellar right over the pig pen. And when Lurvy went to feed it this morning, he noticed the web because it was foggy. And right there in the middle of the web were the words, some pig. The words were actually woven right into the web. They were part of it, Edith. I know because I was down there and I saw them. It says some pig. <coughs> Excuse me, just as clear as clear can be. There could be no mistake about it. A miracle has happened and a sign has occurred. Here on earth, on our farm, we have no ordinary pig. Well, said Mrs. Zuckerman, it seems to me you're a little bit off. It seems to me we have no ordinary spider. Oh no, said Zuckerman, it's the pig that's unusual. It says so right in the middle of the web. Maybe so, said Mrs. Zuckerman, but just the same, I intend to have a look at that spider. It's just a common gray spider, said Zuckerman. They get up and together they walk down to Wilbur's yard. You see, Edith, common gray spider. Wilbur was pleased to receive so much attention. Lurvy was still standing there and Mr. and Mrs. Zuckerman, all three of them stood for about an hour reading the words on the web over and over and watching Wilbur. Charlotte was delighted with the way her trick was working. She sat without moving a muscle and listened to the conversation of the people. When a small fly came to her web just beyond the word pig, Charlotte dropped quickly down, rolled the fly up, and carried it out of the way. After a while, the fog lifted. The web dried off, and the words didn't show up so clearly. 
the Zuckermans and Lur Lurvy walked back to the house. Just before they left the pig pen, Mr. Zuckerman took one last look at Wilbur. You know, he said in an important voice, I thought all along that that pig of ours was an extra good one. He's a solid pig. That pig is as solid as they come. You notice how solid he is around the shoulders, Lurvy? Sure, sure, I do, said Lurvy. I've always noticed that pig. He's quite a pig. He's long and he's smooth, said Zuckerman. That's right, said Lurvy. He's as smooth as they come. He's some pig. When Mr. Zuckerman got back to the house, he took off his work clothes, put on his best suit. He got in his car and he drove to the minister's house. He stayed for an hour and explained to the minister that a miracle had happened on the farm. So far, said Zuckerman, only four people on earth know about this miracle. Myself, my wife Edith, my hired man Lurvy, and you. Don't tell anybody else, said the minister. We don't know what it means yet, but perhaps if I give it some thought, I can explain it in my sermon next Sunday. There could be no doubt that you have the most unusual pig. I intend to speak about it in my sermon and point out the fact that this community has been visited with a wondrous animal. By the way, does the pig have a name? Why, yes, said Mr. Zuckerman. My little niece calls him Wilbur. She's a rather queer child, full of notions. She raised the pig on a bottle, and I bought him from her when he was a month old. He shook hands with the minister and left. Secrets are hard to keep. So long before Sunday came, the news spread all over the county. Everybody knew that a sign had appeared in a spider's web on the Zuckerman farm. Everybody knew Zuckerman had a wondrous pig. People came from miles to look at Wilbur and to read the words on Charlotte's web. The Zuckerman's driveway was full of cars and trucks from morning till night. Can you see the picture of all the cars? You see them and all the people? The news of the wonderful pig spread clear up into the hills and farmers came rattling down in buggies and buckboards to stand hour after hour at Wilbur's pen admiring the miraculous animal. All they all said that they had never seen such a pig before in their lives. When Fern told her mother that Avery had tried to hit the Zuckerman spider with a stick, Mrs. Arable was so shocked that she sent Avery to bed without any supper as punishment. In the days that followed, Mr. Zuckerman was so busy entertaining visitors that he neglected his farm work. He wore his good clothes all the time now. He got right into them when he got up in the morning. Mrs. Zuckerman prepared special meals for Wilbur, and Lurvy even shaved and got a haircut. And his principal farm duty was to feed the pig while people looked on. Mr. Zuckerman ordered Lurvy to increase Wilbur's feedings from three meals a day to four meals a day. The Zuckermans were so busy with visitors, they forgot about everything else. The blackberries got ripe. Mrs. Zuckerman failed to put up any blackberry jam. The corn needed hoeing, and Lurvy didn't find time to hoe it. On Sunday, the church was full, and the minister explained the miracle. He said that the words on the spider's web proved that human beings must always be on the watch for the coming of wonders. All in all, the Zuckerman's pig pen was the center of attraction. Fern was happy. But she felt that Charlotte's trick was working and Wilbur's life would be saved. But she also found that the barn was not nearly as pleasant. Too many people. She liked it better when she could be all alone with her friends, the animals. Chapter 12 is called A Meeting. One evening, a few days after the writing had appeared in Charlotte's web, the spider called a meeting of all the animals in the barn cellar. I shall begin, I will begin by calling the roll. Wilbur, here, said the pig. Gander, here, 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 said the gander. You sound like three ganders, said Charlotte. Why can't you just say here? Why do you have to repeat everything? It's my idio, idio, idiosyncrasy, replied the gander. Goose, said Charlotte. Here, 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 said the goose. And Charlotte glared at her. Goslings, one through seven. Beep, 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 said the goslings. This is getting to be quite a meeting, said Charlotte. Anybody would think that we had three ganders, three geese, and 21 goslings. Sheep, 
Hee-haw, repeat, answered the sheep all together. Lambs, ee-haw, said the lambs all together. Templeton, no answer. Templeton, no answer. Well, we're all here except the rat, said Charlotte. I guess we can proceed without him. Now, all of you must have noticed what's been going on around here the last few days. The message I wrote in my web praising Wilbur has been received. The Zuckermans had fallen for it, and so has everybody else. Zuckerman thinks that Wilbur is an unusual pig, and therefore, he won't want to kill him and eat him. I dare say my trick will work, and Wilbur's life can be saved. Hooray, cried everybody. Thank you very much, said Charlotte. Now, I called this meeting in order to get suggestions. I need new ideas for the web. People are already getting sick of reading some pig. If anybody can think of another message or remark, I will be glad to weave it into the web. Any suggestions for a new slogan? How about Pig Supreme? asked one of the lambs. No good, said Charlotte. Sounds like a rich dessert. Okay, how about terrific, 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 said the goose. Cut that down to terrific and it will do very nicely, said Charlotte. I think terrific might impress Zuckerman. But Charlotte, said Wilbur, I'm not terrific. That doesn't make a particle of difference, said Charlotte. Not a particle. People believe almost anything they see in writing. Does anybody here know how to spell terrific? I think, said the gander, it's T double E double R double R I double F double I double C C C C. Sorry, let's get to go back to the video. Sorry about that. Um, sorry, 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 said the gander. What kind of acrobat do you think I am, said Charlotte? I would have to have St. Vitus's dance in order to weave a word like that into my web. The oldest sheep spoke up. I agree that there should be something new written in the web if Wilbur's life is to be saved. And if Charlotte needs help in finding the words, I think she can get it from our friend Templeton. The rat visits the dump regularly and he has access to old magazines. He could tear out bits of advertisements and bring them up here to the barn cellar and Charlotte could have something to copy. Good idea, said Charlotte. But I'm not sure Templeton will be willing to help. You know how he is. Always looking out for himself. Never thinking of the other fella. I bet I can get him to help, said the old sheep. I'll appeal to his base, basic instincts, of which he has plenty. Here he comes now. Everyone kept quiet. Please keep quiet while I put the matter up to him. The rat entered the barn, as he always did, creeping along close to the wall. What's up, he asked, seeing all the animals together. We're holding a director's meeting, said the sheep. Well, break it up, said Templeton. Meetings bore me. And the rat began to climb a rope that hung against the wall. Look, said the old sheep. The next time you go to the dump, Templeton, would you bring back a clipping from a magazine? Charlotte needs new ideas so she can write messages in her web and save Wilbur's life. Let him die, said the rat. I should worry. You'll worry all right when next winter comes, said the sheep. You'll worry all right on a zero morning next January when Wilbur's dead and nobody comes down here with a nice pail of warm slops to put in the trough. Wilbur's leftover food is your chief source of supply. Templeton, you know it. Wilbur's food is your food. Therefore, Wilbur's destiny and your destiny are closely linked. If Wilbur is killed and his trough stands empty day after day, you're going to grow thin and will be able to look right through your stomach. Templeton's whiskers quivered. Maybe you're right, he said gruffly. I'm making a trip to the dump tomorrow afternoon. I'll bring back a magazine clipping if I can find one. Thanks, said Charlotte. The meeting is now adjourned. I have a busy, busy evening ahead of me. I have to tear my web apart and write terrific. Wilbur blushed. But I'm not terrific, Charlotte. I'm just about average for a pig. You're terrific as far as I'm concerned, said Charlotte. And that's what counts. You're my best friend. And I think you're sensational. Now stop arguing and go get some sleep. So with that, I'm going to say good night and I'll see you tomorrow night.